standards-based approach where we're working together to write specs. We wanted to have a collaborative open source project that the companies involved in OCF can work in a true open source manner and contribute code to help speed solutions to market. And we needed to develop a very robust certification process to make sure that these products interoperate in a very seamless and secure manner. We're going to touch on all of these today, and the other speakers, David McCall, Dave Brenner, Ed Aegis, and other speakers that are joining us are going to address each one of these pillars. We had to drive massive scalability, and it's the openness, it's the standards, it's the certification that will allow us to achieve massive scale. And also when we founded OCF, we knew that there was other organizations and other verticals that we needed to work with. We had to have liaisons to the automotive industry with Genevi and um, automotive grade Linux. We had to work in the healthcare space with PCHA. We have to work in the industrial space with OPC and OPC UA. We had to have common data models so that we define a common language for devices on the edge to do discovery, connectivity, the security. And we have to have technology bridges to existing technologies and devices that are in the ecosystem so that we don't just ignore all the work that's been done already today, that we build upon this work that's already been done to make things work together more seamlessly. Hi 那一定是要 open source 不要封闭了 会很多都不一样的。你这样子说一定要用一个共同的平台来发展那些新的产品。那OCF的角色是在这一方面。那第三个的话,这个互联网,无联网的市场是非常复杂。以前是说有一个单独的PC的行业,或一个单独的收集的
And here's a brief overview of the timeline of the OCF progress. You know, we founded OCF in August of 2014. In December of 2015, OCF merged with the assets of the UPNP Alliance. Uh, this increased our OCF membership, which I'll show you on the next slide. And we also got a very valuable tool, tool from UPNP for data model repositories called One Iota. We renamed OIC to OCF in February of 2016 when we added Qualcomm, Microsoft, and Electrolux to the OCF Board of Directors. And then most recently, and what we've been very excited about, is merging OCF and the Alcine Alliance into one organization. OCF and Alcine Alliance were working on the same solutions, had a lot of the same o companies and overlap in membership, and the boards of directors of the Alcine Alliance and OCF agreed to merge over the summer, and this just closed uh, the last couple of weeks. So we're very excited about this, and next week will be our first full membership meeting with the two organizations. So in two years, Foundation。所以他們是合併的。Thank you, Richard. And here's just a overview of the growth of OCF. When we started, you know, the first inflection point is when we merged with UPNP. The next inflection point was our merger with the Alcine Alliance. And our goal by the end of this year is to have OCF and as an organization over 300 members actively participating, delivering these solutions, the specifications, and the open source to the industry. And lastly, to hit this goal of the membership to increase our reach into, you know, geographies like China and the industry here, uh, please go out and look at openconnectivity.org on how to join. This has our membership agreement, the IPR policy, the bylaws, all the different membership levels, and then there's many of us here this after, or this morning and this afternoon that can help answer your questions. We really look forward into more companies joining OCF and actively helping us deliver these solutions to the market. So, Gary, welcome so